This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this caricature effect using GIMP. And in, old, in order to follow along with this tutorial, you'll need to download and install an extension for GIMP called Gimmick. It's a free download. I'll put a link to it in the description of the video. So just go ahead and download that and install it before you fire up GIMP, and then we'll be good to get started. So starting out here, you can see I have this photograph uh, opened up with GIMP. If you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing, I'll put a link to this photo. That will be in the description as well. Otherwise, you can use whatever photo you'd like. So the first thing we want to do is just right click on the layer down here, wherever your photo is, and make sure alpha to make sure you click on alpha uh, add alpha channel. If it's already grayed out, then that means you already have an alpha channel and you're good to go. And then we can get started. So the first step would be to separate the subject from the background. And to do that, for this one, for this image, I'm going to use the Paths tool, which is over here. You can click on that where it says Paths, or you press B on the keyboard. And I'm going to zoom in onto the, on this area right here by holding Control and rolling up the mouse wheel a few times. And I'm just going to click. I'm going to start clicking to create points going around the edge of the uh, subject here. And if you don't like, if you, if you accidentally misplace a point, you can just hit Control z on your keyboard to un undo that. And you could also click and drag to create, make the line smooth going around uh, uh, like rounded edges like the shoulder over here like you see I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to draw this line uh, going around the subject here and then I will catch up with you when I'm done. Okay, so as you can see here, I finished creating the line going around the subject. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to click, I'm going to continue the line going around the outside of the, uh, the subject here on the outside of the uh, page border. And by the way, uh, to move the page around, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. And I'm going to bring the line back to the starting point, and I'm going to close the path by holding Control on the keyboard and then clicking on the original point. And then I'm going to press Enter on the keyboard, and that's going to create a selection from that path. Now let me press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. I'm going to go to Select, Invert, and that's going to invert the selection so that I have the background selected and not the subject. And then I'm going to press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of the background. And if you're using Mac, you could just go to Edit, uh, Clear, wherever that is. There it is, Clear. Otherwise, if you're using Linux or, or Windows like I am, you could just press Delete on the keyboard. And once we've done that, we can go to Select, None. And let me just click off of the Paths tool onto some other tool so you can see that we've now separated the uh, subject from the background. The next step would be to separate his head from the rest of his body because the effect part of the effect is making the head bigger and the body smaller. So I'm going to go back to the paths tool and I'm going to zoom in under this area over here by going to uh, by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel and I'm going to create another uh, path going around the edge of the uh, the head or the jaw or the, or the uh, jawline here. I'm just going to go through go through here like that, just like that, and then I'm going to finish the path up going around the outside of the subject's head. Zoom back in over here, hold control and click on the original point to close the path. Press enter on the keyboard to create a selection. And with that selection, we want to right click inside of that selection and go to select, float. And it's going to create a floated layer right here in the uh, layers panel. What we could do is we could right click on that floated layer and go to to new layer. And what that's going to do is it's going to create an entirely new layer. It's going to take the head and put it on its own layer separate from the rest of the body. So let's go to, uh, let's click off of the paths tool. I'm going to click on the move tool actually, uh, just so we can remove that path here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. What I want to do next is scale down the body. So I'm going to click on this layer right here, the bottom layer, which is the body. If you toggle the visibility, you can see which layer is the body. The top layer is the head, the bottom layer is the body. I'm going to click on the uh, body layer down here. I'm going to grab the scale tool over here where it says scale, scale tool, click on that. And then click on the, uh, the subject's body like that. You're going to get these four you're going to get these nodes around here. I'm going to take this node on the top left. I'm going to click and drag that down. And then I'm going to hold shift so that it locks the proportions. I'm going to scale this down about that much. I'm going to press enter on the keyboard to finalize that. I'm going to grab the move tool. And then I'm going to take this body and put it towards the center of the page here. And once I'm moving it, I'm going to hold control on the keyboard so it locks it onto the horizontal axis like that. And once we've done that, I want to make sure that this layer is the same size as the entire image. As you can see here, it's kind of smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Layer, Layer to Image Size. And what I'll do now is I'll take the head, I'll click on that layer. Again, with the Move tool, I'm going to take the head and I'm just going to position it over the body like that. And again, I'm going to make this layer the same size as the image. So I'll go to Layer, Layer to Image Size. Now what we need to do is uh, add a, like, like a bit of like a cartoonish effect where we accentuate some of the contrasting features. Like for this image, I'm going to 
I'm gonna click uh, accentuate like the, uh, the the face he's making here with his lips and the chin and everything like that. To do this, we're gonna be using the the, uh, the warp tool. So click on that, the warp transform tool. You can press W on the keyboard to grab that. And if you notice here in this drop down, we have all of these different methods we could use for warping the image. We can move pixels, we can grow the area, we can shrink the area, swirl, array, smooth, and and like and uh, so on and so forth. So for this image, I want to accentuate like the lips here. So I'm gonna click on grow area. I'm going to choose like a soft brush with soft edges like this brush right here. And I'm going to zoom in on this area. Let me change the size of the brush that's a little smaller. I'm going to put it like this, maybe about this size. You can change the size of the brush manually by using the bracket keys. If you use the left bracket key, it'll make it smaller. If you use the right bracket key, it'll make it larger. I'm going to keep it about this size and I'm just going to click like that. And as you can see, it's going to grow the area. Click on that a few times. Well, maybe not that much. You could hit Control Z if you uh, go a step too far. And that right there is about what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm going to press Enter so that it finalizes that. I'm going to grab the uh, the Move Pixels tool. I'm going to make this brush a little smaller. Maybe I'll bring these lips down a little bit to make them look a little bigger. Like that. And again, press Enter to finalize that. Let me zoom out a little bit. What I want to do is... Uh, accentuate the uh, glasses a little bit too because the glasses are like kind of big and we can we can you know enhance that by making the glasses look even bigger so I'm gonna grab the grow area tool again I'm gonna make this a little bigger with the uh, right bracket key I'm just gonna click on that to make that bigger same thing over here make that a little bigger um, I'm gonna make the head smaller I'm gonna go to the shrink area the shrink area selection let me make that a little bigger as you can see, this boils down to like just personal intuitiveness. Like this is like a lot of this is like freehand. Um, you kind of kind of have to just like see, try it out for yourself to see how it works. And again, we shrunk the area, but now it's looking like the head's looking a little stretched out. So I'm going to go to the Move Pixels tool. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. Maybe bring that in. Maybe I'll take these glasses and bring them down. They don't need to be up there like that. Let me bring the shrink the tool size like that. Oh, maybe not that much. That right there is pretty good. And then finally, I just want to make the nose a little bigger because it's a little too small for the face here. So I'm going to go to the grow area and just make that a little bigger. And then when I did that, when I did that, it took the edge of the glasses and made it warped. So I'm going to go, go back to the move tool, bring that down a little bit and move that in like that. And I'd say that's good enough. I'm going to press enter on the keyboard to finalize that. And then finally with the body down here, I'm just going to make it a little smaller up top. I'm going to make the shoulders a little ne less narrow and I'm going to make the neck like skinnier. So I'm going to click on that layer to activate that. And from the uh, warp transform menu, I'm going to choose shrink area. Let me make that brush much bigger. Maybe going over the entire body like that. And I'll just go ahead and click on it once to see. And as you can see, it's shrinking down the size of the body, of the upper body anyway. Like that. And that right there is the effect I'm going for. I'm going to press enter on the keyboard to finalize that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top layer right here. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to click on merge down. And that is now one single uh, layer. So the next step here would to uh, would be to add an effect to make it look like it was like painted or drawn in manually. So to do that, uh, I'm going to apply a, a series of different effects here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filters, enhance, and I'm going to choose um, noise reduction. And with noise reduction, I'm going to take this and bring it all the way up as far as it'll go to the right, which is, I believe it's 30. Let me bring over here. All the way to the right, 32. Go ahead and click OK. And we, as you can see, what it did was it smoothed it, a lot, it smoothed it out a little bit to make it look more kind of like a painting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the unsharp mask to bring out some of those features a little more, uh, to bring out some of like the dark areas and the boundaries and stuff. I'll go to Filter, Enhance, Unsharp Mask. And I'm going to take this standard deviation, I'm going to bring it to the right a little bit. And if you notice on the page, it's changing. You don't want to go too high with it so that you end up with something like this. But at the same time, you don't want to go too low so that it still looks fuzzy. You want to go with something in between, maybe like this right here. Go ahead and click OK. And then the next step would be to smooth out all of this in here. So to do that, I'm going to use the gimmick filter. So I'll go to filters and I'll click on gimmick. Let me grab that window. Let me bring the size of this down a little bit. 
And the setting I want to choose, I already have it selected here. You want to choose repair from this list. Click on repair and then go down to uh, smooth anisotropic, if that's how that's pronounced. And then just go ahead and click OK. And then just give it a minute to do its thing. It'll take a minute or two. And as you can see, it smoothed out the image a little bit. Now, it's not quite where I want it just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply those steps a couple of more times. I'll go to filters, enhance, uh, noise reduction. Again, bring that all the way up. Bring that all the way as far right as it'll go. I'll just go with 28 like that. Click OK. Go to filters, enhance, unsharp mask. Bring that to the right a little bit like that. Click OK. And then I'll apply this filter again. Filters, gimmick, and I'll apply this smooth filter one more time. And as you can see there, it has kind of like an oil painting sort of effect. Um, if you notice here, there's a little bit of like shadowing and shading going around the edge of the uh, of the subject here. That was from the uh, the gimmick filter. It did that um, coincidentally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that layer and go to Alpha to Selection, and then I'm going to go to Select Invert, and I'll press Delete on the keyboard just to get rid of that, and then I'll press Select None. And let me zoom back out over here. And as you can see, we have finished. We've created our caricature design using GIMP. But if you compare it to the original, you'll notice there's a clear and distinct difference between the two. This one's more of like a, uh, a caricature, and this is the original. So that is how you can go about creating caricatures with GIMP. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.